Hello, hello. Okay, we're going to start work now on building the clock plunger. First thing we need to do is we need to start the clock builder. In this case, I'm going to start it from the command line. I mean, we're not going to be using Emacs. Yeah, I love Emacs, but that's not what we're using today. Now, I've we already created uh, in the prequel the actual clock plunger project. So let's get started with card.clog. Now, by the way, I made a mistake. I had actually renamed uh, off the camera the uh, the a panel dot clog and a panel dot lisp files to card dot clog and card dot lisp. Uh, so, anyways, that's what we're working with. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the panel name to uh, index card, and we're going to change the uh, package because we're working with clog plunger. Okay. Uh, there we go and now let's get started so we're gonna build up basically an index card and this is gonna be the this panel is gonna be the template for the various different index cards we're going to use as our interface with the cloud plunger okay so this is a nice little uh, the w3 container it's a nice little um, pretty decent looking uh, type of uh, container you'll see in a moment uh, when I un uh, on highlight it, it's got a nice little shadow and all that kind of stuff. Uh, anyways, we're gonna name it the card frame because this is gonna be the frame of the actual card. Um, okay, uh, da, da, da. getting this all set up. Okay, um, there we go. And let's get rid of the text. Okay. All right, then, now, the next thing we're going to need to do, we're going to have to add a title. Let's add that as a div to the top. Now, by the way, the actual the actual clog frame, we set it up as static before. That's just to put it up at the, to the top left corner there to make it easier for us to work with. Um, usually, I'll switch to absolute so it can be directly positioned. Um, but in this case, the actual um, card title now, Let's move it to the card frame using a drop down to the parent. I could have used other methods to move it in there. And the positioning static, and we change the text to title, and there you go. So now we've got a title basically, and you'll notice on the left bottom the index card. So we're basically, he set the index card up with the card frame and the card title. Now we're adding another, uh, well, let's add a little bar, a little blue bar that we'll put basically uh, underneath the title. Uh, we'll use a div uh, to do this. And what we'll do is we're going to build up the div by removing the text. We're going to put it down to a couple pixels in terms of height. And we'll change the background to blue. Right? So uh, there we go. Okay. So let's get rid of the text. Okay. Let's do a W3 blue as a class that'll make it blue and let's change the height to um, two pixels all right and let's change the parent of course to the index card all right and let's change the positioning to static sorry by uh, positioning to card frame and positioning to static and there we go so we got this nice little blue bar that basically is going to sit there underneath the title okay and then we're going to need to make a little container uh, for the body. Okay, so let's use another div, card body. Okay, again, parent. Um, well, actually, let's use a little another method to move something to become a child. Just basically, you hit the shift key while moving it to card frame. And there you go. Let's change its position to static. And again, let's get rid of the text, right? And that's how it's going to look. Although, actually, let's go ahead and add in there. Okay, looks good. But okay, let's get a little text body frame this way, just so we can see what it is on the actual card while we're working. When we uh, when we actually running in our app, we'll be able to change the contents of title and body, of course, to whatever we want. Okay, and. There we go. Now, what I want to do now is I'm looking for the overflow. There we go, overflow. Now, overflow is marked as visible currently.
and let's change that to auto. Now what this does, it says that anything that overflows outside of the, the frame, which in this case our card frame, Right, then it's going to basically get some some. Uh, it'll have uh, scroll bars. So that doesn't matter for the moment. It's great. So let's save it. And when you do the save, it automatically renders, as well. And uh, I think there we go. I think that's enough basically for us to get started to work with. Okay. Now, here we go. So let's get uh, let's get meaty. We're going to start working basically on the actual code. Uh, like I said, the builder is actually already an excellent ID, and like I said, we're not using uh, Emacs right now. We're just using the builder. And uh, actually, uh, as we start developing, I'll start showing you basically some additional really neat stuff that you can do. Uh, first of all, of course, we still have that A panel left that was from the from the template we used. So let's create index card. This basically creates one of our panels, um, really to sit inside the on file new. So evaluate the form, and ah, I forgot to actually evaluate, I forgot to basically compile or add to my image, my uh, Lisp image, the actual card. So let's go here and run. So this way it actually will compile that out. There you go, so that's actually in the image now. So now I can go back. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Another way we could have done it also, by the way, is just reload the project like that. Well, that's not uh, ideal, but that. Uh, but if you have one file, it's not a big deal. All right, good clock plumber. There we go. Okay, plunger. Okay, so anyway, so here we go. So basically, at that point, we can go ahead and run our project. File new, and oh, and I realized that there's a bug. And by the way, this bug does not going to occur to you if you're redoing this project. Uh, this was actually in the template, and I found it while doing this. So I've, I've updated the template in JIT and uh, Git. And uh, but basically, I, what happens is, is the template should have said here window content. Uh, what we did was is we actually created the index card in the actual frame of the of the uh, of the of the new little window that we created. So that's not great. So what we did basically now is there go, we add it to the window content of the window, and then everything's fine. So now. Um, one of the things, by the way, I, I, I keep forgetting. I sometimes close the actual the actual plumber plunger project, but that's really not really necessary. You can actually just close the window. The next window you create will be with whatever newly compiled version of the of the panel and the window that we work on. You'll see that a couple times now when we keep working on this, uh, which is really again this is a cool part of list. The fact that you can keep. Uh, iterating over and over again without having to recompile everything all the time. Um, you know, like I said, this is part of your REPL. In fact, this, uh, you know, is uh, is a full environment running all the time live. So let's go ahead and let's actually put a bunch of cards into our window. Uh, in this case, let's uh, let's create like 30 cards. All right. And in case you can't look on the, on the video, it actually does the same sort of things like Emacs does. That, for example, when you get to the end, uh, it will actually flash and to show you where the uh, where the end of your uh, there's sorry your parentheses and what they match and all that kind of stuff. So, and as you see here, 30 cards, index cards in our window. So let's make a couple other changes here, because why not? Let's actually get uh, all the parts in place that we're going to need. Let's go ahead and create a card. Let's do. Let's go ahead and for each card, let's actually set the text of the uh, of the title. So card title, and you'll notice uh, that again everything is part of the actual running list image, and everything is available. You know. Uh, you know, it, just like any other part of Lisp on the drop downs, you know, as you're typing and things like that. It actually tells you where it collected it from, if it came from Swank or came from the actual text file. Let's say this is all local, right? Uh, it's there because you're in quotes, you're not part of actual application, so it knows the context you're in, all that kind of cool little stuff. All right, so we've added this, and let's go ahead. 
make sure we got our parentheses correct. There we go. All right. Perfect. Now let's go back to our application. I like to save a lot. Oh, I actually realized I don't have to run it. There we go. Let's go back to the one that was already running. Yeah, there's no reason to rerun additional copies of our application to make this work. So there you go. Card zero, one, two, three. Don't worry, this is gonna get cooler and neater as we go. All right, that's the cool part of a list. We get instant feedback. You know, I uh, part of the card you know, part of the idea behind the clog plunger is about making us uh, more productive and to get us focused and to get rid of coder's block. Well, being in flow is the key. So instant feedback with a challenging project is the number one way to stay in flow. And people just don't get it. Lists from a psychological standpoint is the ultimate language just based on the fact that instant feedback along with again this intense you know power of creating new apps uh yeah let me tell you something this is the coolest stuff for even for for your brain all right clog is awesome okay common list is awesome i can't understand how in the world people got off of this because they got all hooked on just creating new things every time well create new programs as opposed to new languages but anyways long story so let's go ahead let's let's set this up though to do uh, something that looks a little bit nicer so let's actually start move let's move all our let's move all of our our index cards into a flex uh, display basically what we're saying is take the window content set it up as a flex container um, and let's go ahead let's wrap everything okay basically this way as you put as we add additional index cards we want it to wrap and uh, space out All right so let's go ahead and there we go so Okay, so wrap, all right, and let's go ahead now and justify contents. This is where we define how we have the, how much space we put and how we put the various indexes together. Okay, window content win, all right, and space. Oops. Okay. Space around. Okay. Let's save that. Valid. Boom, boom. Great. And there we go. Now, check this out. Da -da -da -da. Pretty cool. Okay, so we got to add some space around the cards. But otherwise, this looks really cool. Ah, can you see this? Can you see this turning into an incredible application? That feedback, it's got me flowing. All right, so let's, let's add some space. Let's add some margins. Uh, I really like uh, W3CSS. In fact, it's, it's used throughout Clog. Um, it's just a really simple, simple, you know, you know CSS collection. Uh, there are plenty of others and and they're all great it's just again this is just what i had around it's free it's public domain it's great works so that's what we're using <laughs> all right you can use other things as well if you want if you want to set them in load them in um all right there we go Get some margin space there we go blah, 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 blah. there you go see it looks nice huh okay great perfect Let's go back. Whoops, so close the window. Okay, that was a mistake, but we'll run it again. No big deal. Um, okay, so everything seems in place. Now, let's do something neat. <laughs> okay, let's add, let's create a an on click card. This is going to be our handler. and what we're going to 
gonna do is we're gonna actually we're gonna add a class for a red border and um, no that's not that's not add class let's let's go back one second let's do a toggle class and on the card that was clicked and uh, W3 border red all right I think that's all we need for that right now we're since we're going to be turning the border red Right, we've actually got to make sure to add some add a border. <laughs> so let's go back to the actual creation of each card and let's add a W3 dash border. Good, okay, and we've got to add the on click. We could actually, and we'll look at the future doing this sort of thing, we could have used the uh, the actual builder portion to add the click, the on click from the from the uh, from the actual uh, from the actual product. And here we go. Okay, go ahead, on click card. Okay, great. All right, there we go. Run. Okay, now you're going to see something super cool. Watch this. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Now check this out. Boom, boom. Aha, aha, aha. Oh, look, how about that full interface over there, huh? Okay, fantastic. Ah, I bet you can't wait for the next, the next episode. Feel good.